the boomerang carving stone from Snake Gully, Green Snake Gully, in the Man River Valley, has other uses. Apart, apart from having edges perfectly shaped for carving the leading and trailing edges of a boomerang, as well as handholds to allow one to control the edge with some precision and secondary edges <coughs> for doing the small work out on the tips. Right? It's fairly definitely a boomerang carving stone but it doesn't work only on boomerangs. This is the spoke shave for taking all the burrs off the spear shafts and this particular spear shaft is one that I made from a stringy bark sapling in 1988 when I acquired a wife who required an Aboriginal artifact made in the traditional fashion before she went to an archaeology residential school. This is stringy bark twine and beeswax holding the stingray stings onto a carved shaped platform. This scored 90% so it's a distinguished Aboriginal fish spear artifact replica and uh, as you can see I could have done a much better job if I'd had this stone tool instead of flat rocks to try and shape the smoothness of the shaft. So it's not just a simple scraping tool with a worn hand grip. As well as that, it's an aerodynamic leading and trailing edge profiler with a chip taken out of there. And as you can see, the end of the spear shaft is equipped with a cone shaped indentation, which originally, before the point broke off, the parrot's beak of the drill would have been perfectly formed for making. Okay, so now let's have a look at what else this little stone is capable of doing. Here we see the boomerang carving stone set with its flat face aligned with east-west true, right? Solar, true, east, west. So on the equinox, the sun rises due east and it sets due west. So it's aligned with this face. This functions as a plumb bob to level itself. So if you put your boomerang down, Set this thing up, knowing what direction is true north. You can observe the season of the year, depending on which way the shadow is cast, morning and afternoon. You can get a pretty reasonable idea of what time of day it is as well. But the big feature of interest is that this little triangular drill point is not on the same axis as the main handle. It's offset. It actually lines up with magnetic north, which is 11 and a quarter degrees away from true north. A feature which is brought to light by this little compass. get it to sit there. Oh, it's not going to want to show up is it? And there we go, it lines up with magnetic north-south at the same time as the carving stone itself lines up with true north-south and it may be entirely fortuitous but it sort of indicates to me that the person who made the stone was aware of the difference between true north, solar north, sidereal north, 
versus magnetic north. And for the fun of it, or perhaps it's a completely coincidental feature in making the grip as perfect as it is, it's built into the stone. So the boomerang carving stone also works on spears and it uh, functions as a pretty nice sundial. Isn't that an amazing bit of gear for an allegedly primitive culture? So we're looking at six cutting edges, two profiles for boomerang leading and trailing edges, one for rounding spears and the damn thing functions as a sundial and seasonal calendar as well as a plumb bob. Multifunction tools. And for northern New South Wales it's a rarity to find a good stone tool because 10,000 years or so ago the locals noticed that the quartz out on the eastern escarpment near Kingsgate would hold a sharper edge for longer and stone tools more or less fell into disuse. So how old is this? And what are the odds? How much synchronicity is there involved in this stone tool being dug up by somebody who recognised it who could then pass it on to somebody who could prove what it was made for? Synchronicity? Coincidence? Way too much for random chance to account for in any reasonable mathematical treatment of the universe. Interesting, isn't it? And as I've mentioned on previous videos on Aboriginal technology, in 1998 the Chairman of the Regional Land Council told me that it was acceptable for me to explain Aboriginal technology to the white people. As he said, good luck, it would have to make an improvement. So, this is the best piece of Aboriginal technology I've seen since I worked out how boomerangs operate. And it's apparently my responsibility to explain it to the white people. Stone Age technology is really high tech when you know what you're looking at. Ciao! One little postscript. In the earlier clip, I stated that my ambition was to use this boomerang carving tool to make a cross boomerang or two using the sections. I've since rethought that. I figure as soon as I take this to town and show it to the Aboriginal Land Council, they're going to confiscate it and give it to the archaeologists. So I'm not going to be able to actually use this because um, they're going to want to examine the stone to see what traces are left on it from the last person who did use it. So there you go, I'm restraining myself barely by the skin of my teeth because I'd dearly love to use this on a boomerang. <coughs> However, beyond matching it up against an actual Aboriginal made boomerang that's 80 or so years old, no, I'll just take it to the land council and uh, give them one of their tools back because I can't imagine they're going to return it to me or the bloke who found it. So, there you go, second time. Ciao.